Can you talk about the timing of uh, why you're hanging them up? Uh, yeah, I, I, just, I mean, I've been playing longer than I think anyone thought I would. My body retired in 2009, but I think my heart just finally can't propel myself to, to play anymore. I took a nasty hit in indoor for the Mammoth this year and got a concussion. And the risk of trying to come back would, would is just, it's not worth it. I got a family here and a job at Valor Christian, and I just can't. Can't risk it again. Uh, try to battle back, but it's just not not in the cards for me. So um, I officially retired this morning from Ohio. Emailed my team and thanked them for allowing me to spend half a season with them. Uh, emailed my families at Valor Christian, telling them that taking the job with uh, with the Outlaws had nothing. I was still going to coach them, still full time there. Um, that this was going to be kind of my weekend gig, um, and then sent kind of a retirement comment to the outlaws which was a lot more difficult than I thought to actually put you know pen to paper and uh, so interesting morning with a quick stop in the dean's office one of my kids was messing around so it's been a full morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah and dealing with a, a teary teary-eyed seven-year-old that couldn't sleep because she's not going to be able to watch me play anymore so that was tough you had a great run the, the teary-eyed seven-year-old how, how tough is it to actually do all that um now? I guess fortunately, because the hit happened in January and we pretty much assumed I wasn't going to be able to get a chance, but I, like I said, I'm stubborn. Um, I kept trying to, to battle, saw a neurologist, did the whole thing, and at the end of the day, it's just not, it's not worth the risk to try to get. I mean, the way I play, I can't run. I've never been able to run, so I literally use my head and my shoulders to batter into my teammate until, or till my opponent, till he gets tired. Um, but I just, it's not worth the risk. I mean, I've got too much to live for now, and it's, I guess, taking me five months to realize that that's the case, but for most athletes, they think the sport they play is everything, and um, now it's time to focus my life on my coaching and my family, and not in that order, obviously. Um, so yeah, I've had some time to process this. So when it finally hit, obviously it's tough, but um, you know, I'm in a really good place, and you know, I'm blessed to have the job at Valor, and to be able to come and coach the game I love in the town that I now call home with the team I spent a couple of years with and actually won a championship with in 14. Um, it's a thrill. I won my first championship with BJ, Coach BJ, in 2008. And Tony and BJ, we won together. And I'm going to learn a lot for those guys. They're two legendary coaches. Um, so I just look forward to learning from them and, and growing my craft. The, um, we mostly cover football here, and there's much about the concussions. But lacrosse, from what I understand, is it's a big problem in that sport, too. Any, anything that can be done as you're going through this right now, that, that that sport can do to make it safer? Yeah, I think it's education. I mean, most sports, I mean, if you actually look at it, I think after football, girls soccer, I think it's number two with high school and colleges. I mean, it's it's a you know growing problem in all sports. Um, but I think the educating while they're playing, before they're playing, after they're playing, and just truly knowing the signs and symptoms and, and resting until your doctor tells you to go. I know that's not something I ever really did, but this time, I mean, you can replace knees and shoulders and backs, but you can't replace what's up there. And I didn't have a lot to, <laughs> to lose in the first place, but uh, it, you know, it's just the right thing to do to make sure that I'm able to do what I need to do off the field for the rest of my life. Just to clarify, are you officially done with the Mammoth as well? And then, uh... What do you want to be remembered for most? Uh, I, I'm not even, I mean, I'm on injured reserve. That's how I'm classified right now with the Mammoth. So, uh, you know, any kind of comments about the Mammoth, I'll make at a later date. And I think they want to to do that. But their uh, team's crushing it right now, and they're doing very well, and they're making a run. They clinched a playoff spot, and I think this weekend they can clinch home field. So I'm going to root them on from the press box. But, uh, you know, the Mammoth organization was awesome in allowing me to take this opportunity. I mean, I asked if I could, because, you know, some of the games conflict, unfortunately. And, you know, um, the president, Steve Govett, gave me his blessing to go and, and to do this while I have an opportunity. So I, you know, I owe them a debt of gratitude for that. Take it, Mark. What do you want to be remembered for most? Do you think? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I just love this game. I've been playing literally since I was in diapers. And, you know, I'm 42 now, so that, you know, 40, 39 years ago, I picked up my dad's stick and started smacking people with it. And I followed him around. He played professionally, and it's all I've ever done. Um, it's afforded me 
trips around the world. I got a full scholarship to the University of Delaware and got a degree because of lacrosse. I've been able to make a home here in Denver, which is unbelievable. So I owe the game a lot and I want to continue to give back. And, you know, I felt a calling to do the coaching years ago and, and coaching at the high school level is a great way to do this. But this opportunity to coach with the Outlaws, I'm going to be coaching the best players in the world for me to have that opportunity to grow my coaching career with, with as I don't want to say it, the reigning world champions. Um, it's it's going to be just an absolute thrill to be able to still continue to be in the professional game, but just not on the field. It's awesome. What has it meant to you to, to grow the game here in the time that you've been here? I mean, that, that game's exploded here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think you look at, you know, the mammoth coming and, and Gary Gate. Um, it's kind of starting that all off. And, you know, every you, – you're on a golf course, or you're driving by backyard, you see nets everywhere, there's lacrosse sticks everywhere. I mean, DU, you know, one of the top programs in the NCAA, and the Outlaws literally were the best team in the league, regular season team in the league since they came. You know, now two championships. You know, it's hard to say that there's a better area of lacrosse being played in the country. And obviously, it's an awesome place to live, which is another bonus, but I hope you know, with being able to play indoor and outdoor here that I was able to help grow the game a little bit. And I hope to continue doing that um, from behind the bench. But on a bigger level, from when you started playing 39 years ago, you talked about your dad playing professionally. I guess how satisfying is it to see the growth, not just in Denver, Colorado, but worldwide? Oh, yeah, for me, I mean, I grew up, there wasn't really professional lacrosse. It was, wasn't like an aspiration of mine to grow up and, hey, I'm going to play pro lacrosse. My dad played, but the league went away for 20, 30 years. You know, once, like every Canadian, you realize you're not good enough to play in the NHL. You know, I had a, a sport to, to fall back on, and I fell on that kind of late. I actually started our field lacrosse team at, at the high school I went to in 11th grade and kind of learned and went the hard way through junior college and stuff. And, you know, that's all you were kind of looking for is, you know, help get into a good school and, and hopefully get a job after that. And while I was going through that, the league kind of, indoor league, kind of started and grew and then a year out of college the outdoor league started so I literally jumped right into pro lacrosse after college when that wasn't really ever a huge goal so I mean to say I was extremely lucky is it, I mean it's just awesome to be able to graduate from school and then live my life in the game whether it's through endorsements and playing it's just been a thrill and now to be able to coach um, for the last three or four years and now professionally you know I'm, I'm extremely excited. John, what are you going to miss most? Just playing, like just strapping the helmet on and and going to battle with your with your teammates. I mean, we're it's a different sport. Not unlike football. I mean, we we play once a week, um, you know. But you you don't for us we don't really see each other that much. Guys are kind of scattered all over and doing their thing and working. You get together Friday, you kind of beat on each other for an hour and a half, go to dinner, wake up in the morning, do it again, and then you go play another team, and then you literally high-five after a win or high-five after a loss, and you fly back to real life. It's, um, But just actually playing the game, like I know there was a comment today that uh, Coach John Cohen, I think I'm going to take the warm-up the goalie responsibility from him because I do still enjoy shooting, and I don't really have to run to do that. But uh, just playing. I mean, I love everything about the game, the artistry, you know, obviously the – the hitting and just the camaraderie. But I mean, guys go to war with each other and it's it's pretty cool, especially guys that literally have to wake up Mondays and clean a sheet of ice at a hockey rink or teach or firefight or whatever they do. Um, it's just a special thing to be a part of. What do you think needs to happen in the sport for it to take that next step where guys don't have to be working second jobs and teams can be together all week and, and practicing and that sort of thing? I think they're on the right track. I mean, obviously securing TV deals is big, but, you know, I know indoor has gone the way of, you know, Twitter and, and some of the, you know, the internet feeds. And I know the MLL still on, you know, Altitude, still on ESPN, still on the other channels. And I think it's finding the right markets and the right times of year. And I think if the two leagues kind of get together on their schedules, I think would help. Um, and just the best players in America playing indoor. And I think the best players in Canada playing outdoor and just, you know, people getting full access to, to the stars and, and to show what they're really doing. And I think it'll grow. I mean, hockey, I think, took forever for it to get to where it is. I mean, it's not something that's going to grow overnight. It, I mean, the right people are doing the right things and with the heart behind it. And I think uh, it'll take off, hopefully, eventually. How long until you get the itch to either sure people will be asking you to join their men's teams or at least find a pickup game that's 
you know, age appropriate, or maybe not even. But how long until you get that to just get back out there and go play? To be quite honest, I'll, I'll be looking for a knee replacement probably with year's end. So uh, I, I'm done playing. I, I mean, even in men's league, those things get pretty aggressive. So I'm thinking golf. I probably won't get hit in the head on the golf course unless I'm playing with uh, a guy with a really bad slice. But, you know, I'm going to focus on, like, I'm really obsessed with lacrosse. So I'm doing everything I can to help my young guys, mentor them, you know, game film for them. And now to do the same thing with the pro guys, I, I'm still going to spend – if not more time in the game of lacrosse, I just won't be actually running around in excruciating pain all the time. You mentioned the um, conversation with your seven-year-old got a little teary-eyed. How did, what did that conversation look like? Well, she, we went to dinner. She actually had a lacrosse practice in Littleton, which I've been trying for seven years to get her to do. Um, but right after practice, she threw her stick down and started doing cartwheels. They said, no, no, no gymnastics on the lacrosse field. So we went for dinner, and then I kind of told her that I, you know, I wouldn't get to play anymore, but explained to her how, because I know she loved the corral and being on the field for outlaw games. I'm like, you're still going to get to do this and that and run around the field until the custodian chases you off. But she goes, but you're not going to play. And I just said, no. So that got tough.